Yeah. All right, I am recording. Okay, so Michael, you're gonna be, you have a lot to do here. So you're gonna be letting people in and then you're gonna be monitoring the chat. Okay, and then we're gonna, so we'll have people, either they can put their name in the chat if they wanna ask a question or they can put their question in the chat. Is Perfect. that okay? Do you want chats afterwards or during? I think, I think it's best for people not to have to hold on to it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to say, you know, if, if you have any questions during, because also if a question is very relevant to the topic being discussed, waiting for Q&A is wasteless. So I, I, it would be great, Michael, if you could keep an eye on them and if they are like relevant, and I'm going to try and keep an eye as well. If they are relevant, um, you know, then, then I will interrupt or I'll, you know, uh, ask, interject the question. Yeah, I mean, I learned with teaching, just go with the flow, but really yeah. this I'm dealing with tech, so I'm gonna be kind of focused on that, so. Yeah. Okay, so maybe Nick can, well, no, Nick's gonna be the- I'm, I'm, I'm used to handling reading and all that, so I'm-, I'm Yeah, okay. I think we were, well, too. we'll figure it out. Okay. Oh, good, all right. All right, so we have 15. Let and me know when time, you're ready. it's time, I think. Now. Yeah, it's eight o'clock. So when we come on, Nick, you'll you'll say that you know we're going to be just giving people a couple more minutes to get on. Well, you know, welcome everybody. But I'm going to start at about eight o five, correct? Sure. Yeah, that's great. So Nick, give me the thumbs up when you're ready to let me. Okay. And yeah, you can uh, get rid of the waiting room once you move everybody in. And quick question: Are we yeah. the only ones that people can see, or are we going to be able to see everyone? Um. You know, is it like a panel discussion? We where, have it where we can see people. They have the choice to show. I mean, yeah, I don't, I, I don't, people. I just wanted to know. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be able to see who's here. And they'll be able to see everybody else. Yeah. Okay. That's correct. And, and Michael has the ability to both mute and turn people's video off. So if, um, you know, yeah, someone has accidentally gets, yeah. left their video on and is not there, we can just turn it off. All right, so you ready, Michael? Yes, so everyone you can good? people in and you're gonna turn off the waiting room, right? Got it. So people can okay. just join us. Great. Thank you, guys. Hello everyone and welcome. Um, we'll be starting at about five after the hour, so in about three minutes. Um, we're just getting everyone in from the waiting room and getting everything started. And Fairlawn TV needs permission to record, please, uh, Michael, when you're done waiting in the waiting lab. So this is being recorded by Fairlawn Television. This is also being recorded uh, locally and will be distributed um, online this presentation as well as all of the flyers inside will also be distributed through the same means it was advertised so facebook and um, constant contact and all those others so any information that you see here uh, will be available to you additionally i'd just like to say that if you have any comments to make uh, during the presentation feel free to use chat so if you have any questions that are relevant to what's being discussed um, if you put those in chat, then we can um, review them and bring them up uh, during. There will be a time for Q&A, uh, in which case we'll be reading questions from chat. And if you would like to come on in video and talk as well, that is an option for you. Um, but chat is certainly um, the probably simplest way to handle most of those. And again, we are waiting about two more minutes. So I appreciate your patience and we'll get started shortly.
I'm going to mute and see if that takes care of the feedback and then that might be me and I can adjust. Um, so please let me know if that uh, fixes things as I mute myself one moment. Yeah. Okay, so it's me that's causing the feedback is what you're what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold on one moment. Is this better? Okay, there we go. Nothing a few settings can't handle. All right, it is 8.06. Um, I appreciate everyone for being patient. All right, so let's get started. So welcome to Trash Talk with Ron Lauterman. It is a candid discussion about recycling and garbage. Uh, so this is presented by the Fairlawn Green Team. And if you're interested in joining the Fairlawn Green Team, you can email greenteam at fairlawn.org. Um, Michael will also put his email address. Uh, he is one of the co-chairs. And if you email him, uh, so that will be in chat, then you can uh, get that information. Uh, the Green Team's vision for Fairlawn is to create a community that understands its, understands its environmental assets and resources and will act to protect, to protect and enhance them. This year, we are concentrating on greening Fairlawn by increasing the health and number of shade trees throughout town, adding to the tree canopy and advocating our fellow residents to plant more trees and maintain the trees that are in the borough. Introductions. Gail Rottenstrike has been a member of the Fairlawn Council since 2018. She has served as both Deputy Mayor and Deputy Mayor of Community Affairs. She is the council liaison to Fairlawn's Green Team, Shade Tree Advisory Committee, gr uh, Garden and Community Garden Committees. She is committed to the goals of reducing waste in Fairlawn and promoting the greening of Fairlawn through the increased planting and maintenance of borough shade trees. Ron Lauterman has been the borough's recycling coordinator since 1995. He is a certified recycling professional and a certified compost operator through Rutgers University. He is an instructor in both Certified Recycling Professional and Clean Communities Coordinator programs. He's been a lecturer on various topics for the NJ Clean Communities and the NJDEP WasteWise program. He has also served on the NJDEP Reinvigorating Recycling Committee. Ron oversees all aspects of the recycling program, which includes overseeing the collection contractor, public education, working with recycling markets and recycling enforcement and completing grants for recycling funding. Lisa Swain represents the 38th legislative district in the New Jersey General Assembly. She was sworn in on May 24, 2018 to succeed Senator Joseph Lagana, and she serves as vice chair of the Women's and Children's Committee, as well as being a member of the financial institutions and insurance, law and public, public safety and agriculture committees. Prior to joining the state legislator, Lisa gave back to her community by serving on the Fairlawn Borough Council from 2008 to 2018 and was selected mayor in both 2011 and 2018. Lisa has always stayed active in her community, working closely with the Fairlawn Economic Development Corporation, the Arts Council, the Green Team, as well as fundraising and working to build a new inclusionary playground. She's an accomplished triathlete with and member of the Team USA and World Championship Triathlon Team. She's also a board member of North Jersey Masters Track Club. Lisa graduated with a BA from the University of Rochester and has her MA from the New York University. She resides in Fairlawn with her husband, Ron, and, the two, and her two adult daughters. So a little bit about the Fairlawn Recycling Division. Um, this should be the last you hear of me for a little while, and then uh, we should be hearing a lot from Ron. So if you don't know, the Fairlawn Recycling Center is on Saddle River Road. Uh, Bottle King would be down here. So it's just a little bit before Bottle King. And there's this little street that has a wonderful sign that says Fairlawn Recycling Center and a bunch of other things. Um, and if you haven't been there, it's a wonderful resource. There's mulch and other things, and Ron can speak to all of that. Um, but it is a physical place you can go visit. All right, and I'll hand it over to Ron. Uh, Nick, just yes. before um, Ron starts speaking, I just wanted to thank everybody for being here tonight. 
Um, and I especially wanted to thank you, Nick, for all the work that you've done putting together uh, the PowerPoint presentation that's going along with this event, uh, which everyone will um, be able to have access to afterwards because it's got a lot of great information. And I wanted to thank Ron for um, working on this event and um, being the star of this event. We had talked about doing this about two years ago and, uh, you know, with COVID and everything, it took us a little time to get it together. Um, and I, you know, would rather have done this in person, but, you know, Zoom is going to work for us. And uh, there is nobody in Fairlawn and possibly in the state of New Jersey who knows as much about recycling as Ron does. Um, he's, he's a local treasure and, you know, I'm grateful to him for everything that he does and for being here tonight to answer our questions. And I wanted to also thank Lisa Swain for coming on, you know, for interrupting her busy schedule to be here with us to talk about um, the environmental issues on the state level. And I wanted to thank Michael Chilino for all the work he's done for the green team. And he's gonna give us some updates and upcoming events uh, towards the end of the program. So thank you everybody and uh, go right ahead, Ron. Well, thank you very much for inviting me here. And it, it's great to see that there's so many participants here that, that actually wanna hear me talk. So um, I, <clears throat> I'll try and keep it concise here as to, to what we're gonna talk about. I, I guess the place to start talking about recycling is where does our recycling end up? Because that has been a major player in <clears throat> really everything that's gone on in recycling really over the last 10 years. Um, so most of the recycling that's collected in the United States, not just Fairlawn or not just New Jersey, is shipped over to the Pacific Rim. So you're talking mostly China, um, some Vietnam, some South Korea, uh, you know, mostly in that area is taking our materials and recycling them into new products and then shipping them back. Uh, most of the local markets, when I say local in the United States, have dried up over the past number of years. And then two major players in New Jersey um, over the last actually two Januaries have really hit, made a major impact in recycling in New Jersey, and especially northern New Jersey. And that would be the fire at Marcal Paper, because they were accepting a lot of paper from local towns. And then just this past January, you had the Atlantic Coast uh, fiber fire that was down at Passaic, and they lost that whole facility as well. Um, so right now there's one major player left for northern New Jersey, and that's waste management, unless we wanted to start trucking stuff down south. So that has impacted pricing. Uh, China and what they've done with their um, greening of China over the last 10 years has made a big impact on the recycling and not in a positive way. Uh, they were getting a lot of contaminants in the recycling and they were taking it uh, for a long time. And part of that was, you know, in the, the numbering system that we were looking at that some people still follow, which is on, if you look on a plastic container, it has a little chasing recycling triangle with a one or a two or a three all the way up to the number nine in it. And people just assume that all of those things can be recycled. And in theory, they can be, but the problem is we have no market for them. So as China started cleaning up their environment, they started taking less and less of the contaminants. And right now, anything being shipped out from, from our recycling markets, which ultimately comes from us as the community, uh, they're only allowed 0.5% contamination within that whole shipment that they're sending out. So 2020 saw our recycling markets starting to penalize us for contamination in the recycling. And that is not a cheap number. And you couple that with the fall in the prices for recycling, and it's a pretty big hit to the community. And, and certainly, you know, Gail and the rest of the council can talk about um, how that affects budget and stuff like that, because the money just doesn't come from, from nowhere. It's gotta be taken from someplace to cover those costs. So on, on the screen right now, what you're looking at is <clears throat> where our numbers have gone in terms of pricing over the last, you know, four or five years. And <clears throat> you can see in 2016 with the orange being the newspaper, we were, we were getting a decent amount of money for paper and cardboard, which falls under that category. Commingle, there was never really a great market for it. So we were paying nothing for it, but we were getting nothing for it. And then you can see in 18 and 19, the paper just sort of collapsed. And then in 2020, everything just fell through the floor. Um, so we're, we're paying a substantial amount of money in order to 
to get the markets to take our recycling. So that's where we sit currently. 2021 is looking like the, the paper and the cardboard or what we call fiber is rebounding a little bit. So we're probably getting maybe about three, $4 a ton for paper, which is much better than a negative aspect. At the bottom, you can see that was our contamination costs for 2020. So because people not recycling correctly and putting stuff into the recycling is what I call wish cycling, meaning that I wish this would be recycled, I'll throw it in the recycling container. Um, the recycling market has to get rid of it somehow. So they penalize all of the communities who were bringing stuff there with the contamination. And Fairlawn was hit with about $53,000 in contamination fees on top of the other fees to just get rid of the material. So <clears throat> this is one of the pictures that our recycling market had actually taken when they had dumped the truck. And you can see in the top left, there's styrofoam mixed in there. And this is supposed to be just the bottles and cans recycling. So styrofoam certainly doesn't fit into the bottles and cans. Plastic bags have never been a good thing for recycling. Um, I know there's some locations like New York City who does it, but they have a different system set up where they have people actually removing uh, the plastic bags. And that has nothing to do with fair loan. That has to do with the recycling market itself. It's a very labor intensive process. And it also shuts down machinery when the plastic bags get caught up uh, in, in the machinery where it's spinning around and, and on the conveyor belts. Uh, the bottom left pink thing is actually a helium container. And one of the big problems we have is people putting scrap metal in with the bottles and cans. Now, the bottles and cans collection will take tin and aluminum cans, but we can't take scrap metal in there. Fairlawn has a separate scrap metal program, which I'll talk about a little bit later when we get to that slide. But scrap metal should never be mixed in with the bottles and cans. And then the last one is down towards the bottom, just above the date. Uh, that's like a plastic um, food container, um, be it a takeout or something like that. So the only plastics that we're really taking, and there's another slide for it that'll give you a, a better visual representation, is plastic bottles, jugs, jars, and family-sized food tubs. And when we get to that slide, I'll, I'll get into that a little bit more. I, I just wanted to um, briefly add, because we're just talking about the food. Um, so uh, any food contamination means it cannot be recycled. So take a pizza box. Um, now, something that kind of blew my mind the other day was if you have a pizza box and the top half has been cleaned because there's no oils and fats and whatever else on it, you can actually rip the top off and recycle the top in, um, you know, in your uh, standard uh, paper recycling. But the bottom, because it has food contamination, must go in the garbage. So, you know, that's, that was one thing that for me was like, oh, I, you know, I've been throwing away something that I really should be recycling. And that's a good point too, Nick, in, in terms of the uh, food contamination is that, <clears throat> not that this food contamination won't separate out in the recycling process. The, the bigger issue is that if we're shipping it halfway around the world and it's, going to our recycling market, maybe even sitting in your backyard for a week before you're putting it out, goes to our recycling market, they bail it, it's then going down to Port Elizabeth, Port Newark, wherever they're shipping it out of, and then it's going by ship over to the Pacific Rim. Sometimes that stuff could be sitting on a ship or, or you know, in transit for up to a month. So think about all that food that you've now left in the recycling containers and how it's going to break down, it's going to rot, it's going to be a vector for bugs and and so on and so forth. So that's why the recycling markets feel that the, the food waste that's left in these containers is a major problem. Was this the plastic bottle slide you wanted to? Um, actually, well, we can talk to these plastic bottles, but there is the other slide that has all the um, commingle regulations on it. Oh, uh, okay, yes. You know which one I'm talking about? Uh, well, I have the, do you want me to, here's the list. Okay, so with, with this, what we made on the Fairlawn website is uh, a list of about 60 of the most commonly asked items. So for example, you can see just a couple of them here, like appliances, metal, um, is recycling. So you'd call my office and we would schedule something. Um, asphalt, for example, would be private disposal because Fairlawn doesn't handle asphalt. Um, household batteries can go in the regular garbage. Rechargeable batteries, we take to the recycling center. So with this list of 60 of them, roughly most commonly asked items, it, it gives people a, a place to go to to just do a quick list 
and see where they, they might want to be putting some of this material. And they can look at that 24 seven. Um, unfortunately for, for you guys, but fortunately for me, I'm not in my office 24 seven. So, um, <clears throat> you know, sometimes you, you may not want to wait for me to give you an answer by calling out my office, but I'm always happy to, if that's what you want to do. Uh, I'm not sure if you want to jump to this yet, but how has COVID-19 affected the amount of garbage generated in Fairlawn? So COVID-19 has been an interesting uh, perspective on the, the whole solid waste industry. Um, people are eating more at home, and unfortunately, it's coming in the plastics that we can't recycle anymore. So people are generating more garbage than what they were before. And we're also seeing more of the contamination because, again, people were doing the wish cycling and having more plastics in the house, they're putting it in the bottles and cans. So we're seeing more contamination on that side as well. Um, in the whole waste industry and, and really in the recycling industry for a, a market um, share and stuff, we've always used uh, weights. So, for example, tonnage. You know, how many tons did Fairlawn recycle in a given year? What you've seen over the last number of years is a move from glass over to plastic in terms of most of your containers. So while we're getting the same volumes, we're filling up the same number of trucks, the, vo the weights have gone down. And that's not necessarily an accurate reflection on recycling not doing well like it was in the past. It's just a reflection on the, the move to different types of packaging. So with all that being said, the garbage volume has gone up a little bit but you, that doesn't necessarily reflect out in the actual tonnage because most of it's the plastics that are moving over there. But that's what's happened with, the, with COVID-19 and, and what's happened with recycling and garbage. Um, you had mentioned scrap metal. Yeah, so scrap metal and electronics are two things that have been um, on our plate in Fairlawn for a long time. Uh, Fairlawn was actually the first, as far as I know, in the state of New Jersey to start collecting electronics at the curb. And we started that in 2004. Uh, it became mandatory uh, within the state, I believe it was 2011 uh, for electronics to be recycled. So Fairlawn was well ahead of the curve on that. But essentially we'll take TVs, VHS players, DVD players, uh, that type of stuff, uh, computers, monitors, printers. Most of the stuff really has to have a circuit board in it for it to be considered electronic. Um, people think electric is a cord and we're thinking electronic with the, the actual chip that's inside or the, the circuit board. Uh, and then anything that's more than 50% metal, we will take as part of our scrap metal program. Now here we have listed mostly appliances and certainly no one's giving me new appliances. They're always old and look a lot worse than this. Uh, but we do pick those up also. <clears throat> and what you need to do is just call my office. We schedule it for your regular recycling day, and it is a special truck that goes around. So whether it's, uh, you know, it's a small pipe that you had in the backyard that you used for, um, you know, staking tomato plants or something like that, or your refrigerator that you're getting rid of, we're happy to pick that stuff up. Just like I said, just give us a call. If it's less than 50% metal, then you can just put it out with the regular garbage. But in either case, please don't put these materials in with the bottles and cans, because it certainly doesn't belong there. What are some of your most frequently asked questions? So as of the last couple of years, the biggest issue has been the plastics. Uh, for the most part, people know what tin and aluminum cans are. Those haven't changed in the program. The plastics are the big thing. And as I mentioned before about the numbers, so the recycling markets at one point were taking the numbers based on one, twos, and fives. And with the whole change in in China and the Pacific Rim and what they're accepting, we can no longer look at those numbers as a sorting method. Because part of the problem has to do also with density. And, and I don't wanna get it too complicated for the residents where they don't wanna recycle anything. So if I tell you that one type of type one is acceptable because of, of something like this, because of its thickness, but yet another type of one is too thin and by the time it gets compacted, and bailed and shipped off to China, when they open it up, it's almost dust. So for, for a resident to try and make that choice, we can't really use those numbers. So we've boiled it down to bottles, jugs, jars, and family-sized food tubs. So these here are all examples of bottles and, and the caps are here because people always ask me about the caps as well. Technically, the caps should come off. 
However, if the residents are recycling this stuff properly and it's rinsed out, I, I'm not, you know, breaking shops over the fact that you left the, the cap on. But if people push the issue, the cap should be coming off. So quick, quick follow up. Caps yeah. can still be recycled. You just want them off so that the things can more easily. Yeah, because be they're generally two different types of plastic and two different densities of plastic. And their sorting machines can't separate the caps from the actual bottle itself. So they request that the caps come off, but still be put in the recycling. Okay. And now, I, now I just other, have a quick question because on yeah, this slide, a lot of this all looks like it housed some sort of detergent or possibly harmful chemical like a, uh, um, a drain cleaner or things like that. What do these need to be rinsed out? Do they need to be rinsed out thoroughly? What's, what's the process for containers that held, um, you know, fluids that are not just like a drink? Yeah, so the whole issue with hazardous waste is that you, you really want to try and use up the product if possible. We don't really want to be dumping chemicals down into our, our sink or, you know, out into the storm drain in the street because that just drains directly to a body of water. The county has the hazardous waste collections for collecting the actual hazardous waste. And we do have the flyer to show a little bit later on. But in terms of this, if you just have a little bit of residue left, like you're finished with your you know, whatever chemical it might be, and you just give it a quick rinse out. That's all we're looking for. Uh, they certainly don't want, you know, fluids or liquids being left in the containers themselves. Okay, there was a question about the orange colored pill bottles. Are those recyclable? So what I'm saying right now, and, and you sort of answered your own question, if I, I'm, and you're gonna hear my mantra throughout the whole night, is that bottles, jugs, jars, family size food tubs. So you just said pill bottle, there you go. It's a bottle. Just put it in. Great. So the answer is yes, they are. Okay. Um, and then anything to note here? Um, so the one thing that I, I would find a surprise in this picture is it is the, the spray cans in the back. Are those recyclable? Yes, they are. Okay. I, again, we asked that the product is finished with them. We don't want a half a can of, you know, Pam or, or Febreze or something like that. Um, and the other issue, too, is that we, we prefer that you rinse these out. Okay. Um, what are some of the greatest hits you've had from the Recycling Center answering machine? <laughs> well, a lot of times some of the funny moments come from people who are calling about something that's not recycling related. Um, or is vaguely recycling related. Because the problem is that my number is posted all over the place. So when people are looking for what office can I call, the recycling number is usually the first thing that they have because the handbook is posted on the refrigerator or something simple. So they call my office first and then they figure I'll reroute them to where they need to go. Uh, one year we had a lady who called and, you know, Fairlawn will clean up the leaves in the street um, you know, with the regulations and stuff during the fall. Well, she called us at end of August, beginning of September, and asked about the leads. And she wanted to know if we could bring the, the vacuum truck or the vac wall over to her house. And I'm like, but ma'am, the leaves haven't started falling out of the trees yet. They're still all green and everything. And she says, no, 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 they haven't fallen yet. I want you to suck them out of the tree so I don't have to rake them up. <laughs> <clears throat> so, and, and she was dead serious about that. I'm, like, I'm, I'm sorry, man, we don't do that. <clears throat> um, I had another lady who called and, and asked about how she could renew her license. Um, I redirected her to DMV saying that, you know, I'm recycling and not DMV. Uh, she asked me if I had the phone number, or if I can, you know, get her the, the person in contact. <laughs> you know, like, ma'am, I, I don't have this information. The, the other interesting thing is that for whatever reason, when you type in recycling or recycling center or something similar to that, Fairland Recycling Center has got to be one of the first hits that comes up because I get calls from all over the place. You know, and I always answer the phone, you know, Fairland Recycling Center, how can I help you? And I still get people going, oh yeah, you know, I want to, I want my metal picked up or something like that. And I'm like, okay. I said, what's your street? And they give me a street name that doesn't exist in Fairlawn. And I'm like, are you in Fairlawn? They're like, oh, no, no, I'm in Harrington Park. I'm like, well, we don't pick up in Harrington Park. Why aren't you calling them? Oh, well, I checked on Google, and this was the number it gave me. So we, we get stuff like that. One, once I had from Fairlawn, Ohio, ended up calling. 
Uh, the manager would not let me drive to Fairlawn, Ohio to go pick up this refrigerator, but I tried. At least it was Fairlawn, right? I went to go visit Fairlawn, Ohio on purpose, by the way. I've been there. Just because it was named Fairlawn, just so you know. Okay. <laughs> they spell it with one word, not two. Correct. And it's right by Akron. Yeah, and all that. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's it. That's my spiel. Okay. Um, so those are, are probably more of the, the funnier ones. Um, I, sometimes, you know, if somebody seems like they're in a good mood or something, you know, they, everybody prefaces their material that they want picked up, like a, a TV or a VCR with, I have an old barbecue, an old TV. And I said, you know, nobody ever calls with a new TV or a new barbecue. You know, I, I, one of these days I'm hoping that somebody will, you know, because I mean, I, who's getting rid of something new? Do, do they really need to preface it with old? So that, you know. That's what that's, we need to do for your birthday. We need to figure it out and then deliver a, have a new barbecue be picked up and then we'll barbecue in the, uh, in the recycling center. There you go. There you go. So those are pretty much the funny ones that I've, I've gotten over the years. Okay, now follow up to that. What are some of the craziest things that people have tried to recycle? Ah, uh, so when we were going around doing the enforcement, uh, the last time, which was 2019, and we were, we were going through pretty much most of the sections, uh, almost on a daily basis through the commingled pickup. And we were finding things like a satellite dish, uh, golf clubs. I had someone throw out, like at ShopRite, you get the chicken, the half or the, the full chicken that's already cooked and it's in that plastic domed container. Yeah, well, they ate the chicken and put the bones back in there and put the whole container into the recycling. Um, <clears throat> so as I mentioned before, you really need to clean the food out. We don't want the bones or the skin or anything that's left over. Um, we found a VCR in there, a curry machine. Um, we had one lady who left a 14 inch kitchen knife sticking out of the middle of the commingle uh, when she called up and said, well, I don't understand. Everything in there is perfectly fine. Well, and I went over there and took a picture of it and sent it back to her and said, yeah, we don't take these. You know, somebody's going to get really hurt on this. She was like, oh, I didn't realize. So again, people aren't doing it maliciously necessarily. It's, it's a matter of that wish cycling. I, I wish this would be recycled. I'll throw it in the container. Maybe somebody down the road will, will actually recycle it. Okay, so now we'll take some uh, audience questions. Uh, there was already one in chat, so I'm going to get to that. And if anyone would like to, um, you know, get on video and ask their question, they're welcome to, but chat is perfectly fine. So the first question was, what about an aluminum plate? So an aluminum plate, again, without seeing it, I'm assuming that this is not the tin foil plates, but a regular aluminum plate, um, that would fall under scrap metal. So they, they, in theory, if you really need me to send a special truck over for one aluminum plate, we would do it. Uh, but you can also drop this stuff off the recycling center as well. But yes, that, that should be recycled. Yeah, for anyone um, who wants to do the drop off, the, the hours are pretty reasonably normal. Um, and you do have weekend hours as well, if, if I'm correct. Yes, Saturday and Sunday or just Saturday? It's seven days a week. Okay, seven days a week. Um, if you check the website, there are the hours. I don't know them offhand. Um, but there are very large containers that are well marked with this is scrap metal, this is electronics, this is cardboard. So at any given moment in time, you can go and drop off your recycling. Um, you don't have to wait for pickup. Yeah, the hours are also in the recycling handbook. If you look on the calendar page in the bottom right corner, and it also gives our address. Um, okay, another question was, can we recycle a steel coffee container? Yeah, so to a steel coffee container, I would put that under the tin and aluminum can category okay. to put it in with your bottles and cans. Um, and there is a question about uh, household battery. Why are household batteries not being recycled? So there's two reasons for that. And, and the biggest reason is on the federal level. <clears throat> from what the feds have told us, and this comes from EPA, is that there is the damaging content within uh, the batteries is no longer high enough to warrant it being an issue to be pulling it from the, from the garbage stream. The, the other issue though, and I think this was more of a, a reason why the EPA and, and the feds really didn't want this um, 
want these to be recycled had to do with a truck fire having to do with batteries. Uh, they had a, a truck that was completely filled with batteries that was being trucked across the country someplace and it went up and it was a major, major problem. The, the batteries, the problem with them, and even throwing them in the garbage, people should be taping off the contacts on both the top and the bottom of the batteries. Because if you, get, if you throw a couple batteries in your garbage and they do happen to spark, in theory, you could start a, a battery fire or a garbage fire because of that. And people weren't doing that. And you know we just had open bins that people were just throwing batteries in and stuff like that. So when the damaging content within the batteries went down low enough for EPA, they said, that's it. They worked with DO, federal DOT and said, that's it. We're, we're not transporting batteries like this anymore. So the only batteries we are taking are the rechargeable lithium ion batteries and our electronics market does take them. Okay. Um, why can't we find a place in the U.S. to incinerate our garbage? So New Jersey does have an incinerator. Um, I believe it's down in the Newark area. And some of the garbage, I, I don't know specifically from Fairlawn, but some of New Jersey's garbage does go to that incinerator. The, the problem with an incinerator, much like a landfill, is you get people who are um, of the mindset of NIMBY, N-I-M-B-Y, and it's not in my backyard. Uh, so the problem comes into citing these types of facilities because nobody wants it anywhere near them. As a matter of fact, they were looking to put uh, an incinerator or a transfer station over, I believe, in the Lynnhurst area. And that was going to be mostly for New York garbage. Well, the residents of New Jersey, especially over in that area, were not pleased with it. And I believe that project has fallen through because of the, the um, pushback that they got on that whole issue. So that's the, the short answer where the long answer between kind of hangs take it okay. on incinerators. Um, I'm getting a bunch of questions about uh, specific items and we're going to go through them. I just want to point out, again, we have the item disposal <clears throat> list, fairlawn.org slash L-I-S-T. Um, and it will tell you what specifically to do with each, but um, I'll just kind of quickly go through um, some items. And, and if you want to give me some concept, uh, so plastic salad containers that are not clamshells, uh, are they recyclable? So you're going to hear my mantra again. Plastic bottles, jugs, jars, and family-sized food tubs. Okay, so, the, so that would the, sound like a no. That's a no. Okay. So the family-sized food tubs, just for clarity, has to do with um, if you get the family-sized yogurt at Costco or something, mm -hmm. that's going to you know, feed more than one person at a time, that's a family-sized food tub. If you're buying the individual yogurt containers or any individual style container, those are garbage. And a lot of that has to do with density and becoming dust by the time it gets to China. Okay. Um, the chicken container you mentioned previously, if it doesn't have the skin, bones, everything else, and is gently rinsed, is that recyclable or no? Short answer is no. And my okay. mantra again, bottles, jugs, jars, family size food tubs. Um, a Pringle can. So the cardboard cylinder, the metal bottom, and the plastic cover. Um, are any of it recyclable? The, the metal ring becomes an issue for them because of separation. Okay. If you want to cut the metal ring off and throw the cardboard portion in there, you're more than welcome to do that. Okay. Um, fluorescent bulbs, recycle or garbage? Uh, actually, neither. So fluorescent bulbs under uh, federal law fall under hazardous waste. Okay. So Bergen County Utilities Authority does have the hazardous waste collection. Um, some of the either Home Depots and or Lowe's were collecting fluorescent batteries. Uh, you would have to call them first before you bring your batteries down there, but they were at one point and now might only be the uh, CFLs or, or the compact fluorescent lights. And I, you, you did say fluorescent batteries. I believe you meant fluorescent bulbs. I'm sorry, bulbs. fluorescent bulbs, yes. Perfect. I'm, I'm okay. stuck on batteries Just here. clear, just clarifying. <laughs> um, empty propane tank, does the recycling center take those or no? No, we do not. They can go down to the county, county hazmat. Um, your other option too is some of the propane places uh, that do the refilling will also take them and you can have them refilled in many cases as well. Okay. Um, someone's asking if you could elaborate on the one more pound program that was in Fairlawn a few years ago. Is that still ongoing? It is. And, and Nick, I think we have a, one know. of the flyers on that um, somewhere within the 
presentation. Maybe if you can find that while I talk okay, about it. Sure. And, and as I'm watching Anna raise her hand there too, she's physically <laughs> raising her hand. So maybe at some point we can get to her question as well. So the One More Pound program talks about garbage costs versus recycling costs. So as you know, I thought I had given it to you and, then, and maybe I didn't. Um, so the, the issue comes down to cost. So when you're talking about garbage or recycling, since we have an outside contractor, you're still paying the collection cost of them sending a truck down the street with the guys on the back to pick up the material. The, the big difference comes into the market that you're sending these materials to, whether it's going to, well, you, Fairlawn sends everything to a transfer station, which is then ultimately shipped out to either a landfill or an incinerator or a combination of both. So there's a cost of what we call a dumping fee for that garbage. Right now with our current contract, it's about $80.50 per ton. You then look at recycling, where even though our markets are depressed and you take just the $5 a ton that we're earning for the paper and cardboard, you look at the swing on that. So if I throw a ton of cardboard or paper out, it's gonna cost the town $80.50. And then we're also losing that $5 for that ton in revenue. So that $80.50 now becomes $85.50 that the town is losing out on. So there's still a, a reason to be recycling. So for example, the, the bottles and cans, we're paying about $60 a ton right now. It's still cheaper than throwing it out in the garbage by $20 a ton. And not that I'm encouraging you to throw contaminants in there, but to recycle properly. So at least we're saving that $20 a ton by recycling properly and not throwing it in the garbage. So when people threaten me, with the, well, you made recycling too hard, I'm gonna throw everything out. Ultimately, what they're doing is they're wasting taxpayer money by the, in, in terms of the plastics by, by $20 a ton. So, and just for a rough number, last year for 2020, Fairlawn did in bottles and cans tonnage, um, 1,566 tons. So when you take a whole community, it adds up to a large number. So uh, actually, um related to what you were just saying. So someone asked, and I'm going to paraphrase just slightly, if, if they have a neighbor who um, isn't quite understanding the recycling or garbage policies, um, how, what's the best way for them to report it so that you can go there and provide them you know, the proper education necessary? Just call your office? Yeah, so they can either call my office um, or they can email me, recycling at fairlawn.org. I mean, certainly I need the address of where the person is who's not properly recycling. And if you can give me some sort of idea of what it is that they're exactly not doing, um, that would help me too when I go out to actually see. Very rarely do I issue a warning based upon just somebody calling or emailing me. Usually I want to go out and see it for myself. Unfortunately, there's people in town who just don't get along and they happen to be neighbors. And what they then tend to do is to get the town involved by calling on each other because of the grass being an inch too high or there's one bottle in there that doesn't belong in there or something like that. So I'd rather go and see it myself and actually work with the resident. So as, as, a, as this is a lead in, what I look at in terms of enforcement, um, you know, it's, it's not that I'm pulling people out of their house at gunpoint, you know, playing the bad boys <laughs> theme song in the background. Um, it's, we use a warning system. And my goal is to give you the warning to let you know that there was something incorrect and give you the opportunity, A, to see what was wrong with it and to correct the behavior. But number two, my phone number is on there and such. So if you're really not sure what's going on, give my office a call. We'll be happy to answer the questions for you or look at the resources that we have online. You know, our goal is to make this all better for everybody in the community and to save federal and taxpayer money, ultimately. So if you do have somebody who's just not getting it and stuff, sometimes it's a matter of just mailing a, a recycling handbook to them or leaving a warning with some educational material, and that just solves the problem. I mean, I would hope in most cases that you'd be able to talk to your neighbor and just say, hey, look, you know, I know she had this in there. You know, if, if you're not sure about it, call the recycling office or something, but that doesn't belong in there. And I know some people just don't want to get involved and do that. Um, but by all means, contact my office, and we're happy to, uh, to do that. But along those lines too, since we're talking about enforcement, is 
what we've been doing over the past couple of years, we've been doing the hang tags that we've been putting on the barrels of the bottles and cans where we've been finding the contamination. And unfortunately, we've been doing a big educational campaign, both in the recycling handbook and online and, and other means, and people were just not getting the message. Unfortunately, most people don't read in this day and age. So what we're finding is that if we leave the material behind because of the contamination, people were, are then reading the material that we're leaving and at least calling and asking questions so we can better educate them. And unfortunately, we've come down to that. I've not dragged people into court in a number of years. Uh, I did a couple of times bring people into court. Uh, so my policy is that I'll issue you three warnings. And within that year, if you get three warnings, I'm going to send you, as I call it, my love letter. And that'll rephrase the, the issues that you've had and say, look, here's another recycling handbook, here's some other material. Please read through it. If you have any questions, please call my office. If it happens again, we're going to have to issue a summons. So I've been to court maybe a dozen times in my career for people who just don't want to do what they're supposed to do. So, but that hasn't happened in a number of years, thankfully, because my goal is not to drag people into court. I'd rather just educate you and, and get you to do the right thing. Okay. So one last quick one, which is an aluminum foil takeout pan. Oh, and been waiting. I, I, I'm going to, this is a teacher oh. and me <laughs> and I teach there. Uh, good, good. So I, I'm okay. So let's, yeah, let's get the aluminum hand. foil takeout pan. Is that a yes or a no for recycle? So the aluminum foil, they can take. I've been reluctant to advertise it only for the fact of the high percentage of contamination that we have. So if you want to rinse off or clean out the food waste in that pie plate or, or you know, aluminum container or the aluminum foil, I'm more than happy to take it with the bottles and cans. But it has to be clean. You know, okay. I, along the same lines, we've had people who've wrapped up their food and left it inside the aluminum foil and thrown it in the recycling. Okay, uh, Anne had a question. Uh, Michael, if you could uh, unmute her. Okay, um, can you hear me? Yes, we yes. can. Okay, my whole thing is the recycling, Ron. And from what I heard, I think I have to go out in my two bins and take half the stuff out. Um, but I'm not sure. You said that yogurt containers are not recyclable. You, did I understand you? I get meals on wheels. And there's a lot of that in there. I do rinse them. They're clean. Everything is clean that I put in there. But am I doing things wrong? I also put, you know, you, I get the, the Poland Spring water bottles. I put them in there. And then that plastic that goes around it, I put that in there. So that's not supposed to be done? Yeah, so like I said before, so plastic bottles, so your water bottle would certainly fit under that, that category. Jugs, we're thinking like milk jugs, orange juice jugs, that type of stuff. Um, jars. What about, what about the containers for holding milk? You know, so the, they're, like, they're like cardboard or with a little wax or something on yes. it? Yes. So the, those are wax-coated, what they call technically wax-coated gable top containers. Okay. So those are acceptable in the commingle. Nick, if you can find that one slide that has the flyer with the, uh, the commingle, stuff on it that might be helpful for us. Because I know you showed a picture, but you know I couldn't distinguish that picture. Nick, it was the same, it was similar to the one that was the paper. Uh, maybe you didn't put it in there. Well, I can't I'm read it. I, I, don't, I don't have that in the current slide. Um, okay. And I what, I, what sure I can do for you or, or for anybody who's, who's watching, if you go to fairlawn.org slash recycling, we have all of these flyers there as well that you can download in PDF format. And I know you don't have that capability, so I will get you um, one of those flyers and mail it out to you. Okay. Yeah, because I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to leave it there. You're going to get them next Monday, but I'm... <laughs> But I, Not I, if I'll I get to you first. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to, I'll do it differently after this, but I mean, they're both full to the top because some days I forget to put them out or I don't, I'm not able to go out. If I don't feel well, I don't put it out in front. So, and no one puts it out for me. So they, they fill up pretty, that's why I have a, a lot of containers there because I don't put it out every week. Yeah, that's fine, Anna. Like I said, I'm, I'm, my goal is to work with you and everybody else. I, I know okay. that this is not an easy thing, so I'll, I'll get the information out to you. Okay, that's great. Thank you. 
I, I, I couldn't find a chat, so I couldn't ask the question. I didn't find it on my phone. That's perfectly fine. That was a great question. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And now we're going to go to our very special guest, um, Lisa, to talk about the plastic bag, uh, bag ban update, which was a question in chat as well. All right. Thank you. And thank you, Ron, for always enlightening us on all the details of recycling, an ever-changing field. Um, so I'm going to get right to it. Um, we were talking about banning plastic bags for a very long time, and we finally did it at the state level. And so I'm going to give you the details of the ban so everybody's aware of what's going to happen and when. So starting in May of 2022, so almost a year, a year and a month from now, um, plastic and paper bags, um, and that's paper single use bags, those will be banned as well as disposable food containers and cups made out of poly, poly, oh God, poly, polystyrene foam. Sorry, it's been a long day. Um, paper, um, so let me just say that again so everybody's very clear. So starting May 2022, 20, plastic and paper single-use bags as well as the disposable food containers and the cups made out of um, styrofoam will be banned. Um, there are going to be exceptions what is allowed and that is disposable long handled um, foam soda spoons. Those are the kind that you might find in the hospital for people who are having trouble drinking. So those will be exempt. Um, the portion cups of two ounces or less if used for hot foods or foods requiring lids, I, you know, those will have like the sauce in them or those will also be exempt. Meat and fish trays for raw or butchered meat, including poultry or fish that is sold from a refrigerator or similar retail appliance. Those are gonna be exempt. Any food product prepackaged by the manufacturer with a polystyrene foam food service product, those also will be exempt. So you, I think you know what I mean, those are, you know, if you go to the deli counter and you get the pre-sliced deli meat um, and they come on kind of that styrofoam uh, bottom. And, um, and then of course, anything like a, uh, also a polystyrene foam food service product that's determined necessary by the Department of Environmental Protection. Those will also be exempt. Um, and under the new law, food service businesses will be allowed to provide single use plastic straws only upon request. And that's starting this year in November of November 2021. So that's, that's the bottom line on the plastic bag. So we are moving ahead. Um, you may think that it's, it's so far in the future, but, you know, we wanted to give people time to get used to what's coming and then businesses also to get used to um, and to be able to have time to purchase alternatives. So, um, so that's it in a nutshell on the plastic bags and the paper bags. Any questions about that? If you have questions, you can put them in chat or you can raise your hand and ask directly. I'm okay with that one. <laughs> Good. Um, is, sorry, there's a question. Is the single use plastic ban a state law? Yes. 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 So now all the towns that were thinking about doing it um, and may have been holding off, now there'll be a state law that will be in effect as of May 2022. And that will override um, the municipal um, ordinances that may have been put in place. So I think I know the answer to this, but I'll, I'll, I'll pass it to you. So single use plastic water bottles. That is not banned. Okay. 
bags. Uh, does this affect industrial use of single use plastics? Um, I, I don't think so because it's pretty specific. Um, it's really a bag ban. I don't know if, 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 if you someone have... wishes to get more information about the specifics of this law, where would they need to, where would they go to find that? Okay, let me put my... And then we have a question. Okay, let me, let me just write my email. Okay, I put my email in the chat. So anybody can contact me. And Michael, if you want to unmute the uh, question. Oh. Oh, I see Sorry. about the Mylar <laughs> balloons. I, I'm in agreement about that. Yeah, balloons are terrible. Um, and um, I do hope we can get on banning that soon too. Um, I was, I wanted to ask, are bags going to be single use bags being, be able to purchase? Will we be able to purchase them? Um, I, no, like, I, I, like the Europeans do. If I go into the supermarket, I forgot my, my totes. Will I have to buy a whole new set of totes or will I be able to purchase plastic bags for single use so you and then reuse able, them? You'd be able to purchase a reusable bag, but not so a, will, sorry, uh, but not a re, not a single use plastic bag. Because, so then people will be stuck with 50, 60 reusable bags for each time they forget um, to their bag to the supermarket. Well, hopefully, um, first of all, you know, this has been, this concept has been in use and there are many states that have already banned so I think that people are already getting used to the concept. Um, I mean, I remember years ago when, um, you know, I started to use my own bags. When I first went to the grocery store, I would always forget. So I would just say, oh, forget it. I'll just use the paper. And then I would remind myself. And then I would say, okay, this time I'm going to go back to my car. I'm going to get my reusable bags. And then now it's, you know, my behavior has changed. And I always remember to bring my bags. So, you know, that's the object, that's the goal is so that everybody will know before they walk into a store that they have some sort of reusable bag with them. So I leave them on, the, on my door before I leave. I know like sometimes it's annoying, but literally, otherwise I'll forget. <laughs> uh, you know, Europe has been doing this for over a decade and it's, it's, not, it, it's not a ban, but it's illegal to give for free. You can buy. The, the single use plastic and most like I think most of the people don't most of the people use their reusable totes um, but there's still the option like those bags should not be thrown out they should be reused all the way through um, so I'm, I'm just out of curiosity if I reuse these bags right now I reuse them around the house for little garbage pails I will now have to buy these plastic bags to use for these garbage pails Yes, those are not going to be banned. And somebody just asked about the little poop bags. You'll still be able to purchase, um, you know, like the bags for your garbage. Um, you, you will be able to purchase some plastic bags. The, the aim of the bill of the law is, you know, what's on the screen right now are those single use plastic bags that end up in our waterways that end up kill, you know, killing animals. Those, those are the things we want to get out of the environment. And likely what you'll see from the businesses, um, and again, all, depending on where in Europe you are, they all, they all have different solutions to this. There are bags similar to the yellow bag, which is a little more thicker, but they end up being a little more thicker. So instead of having to pay a dollar per reusable bag or $2 per reusable bag, you know, something like a ShopRite likely will have something like this as an alternative for a quarter. Um, and in theory, it's still, you know, it's reusable a few times. It's not perfect, but it basically gets as close to being, you know, as close to being, you know, just over that edge of being single use. Um, so you'll, you'll find solutions like that, but it's, it, to put that into the law makes it, makes it very complicated. Just to make 
to be clear, I'm very pro reusable bags. Mm -hmm. I just see retail stores, for example, giving reusable totes instead of paper or plastic bags. And those are very polluting to manufacture. They are, sh they should still be, should be dis dis mm -hmm. discouraged. I hear you. Um, yeah. and, and it's, it's kind of one step at a time. If we were to ban everything, uh, you know, people would, would really be at, at a hardship, um, you know, for when they go into stores and they have absolutely nothing. So, um, you know, at least there'll be the reusable bags that, pe and, you know, hopefully people will get used to it and they'll just keep, you know, there are two or three bags in their car or, you know, now there are so many um, of these small bags that you can just fold up into like a little ball and put into your, your pocketbook, your backpack or whatever. And, you know, the, and hopefully people will change their behavior and, you know, just become a lot more conscious about what they throw away. So being mindful of time, we have two more quick questions and then we've got a few little more slides. And uh, so let's get to these questions and then uh, finish things up. Um, what happens to the already existing single use plastic bags? Are they expected to be phased out over time or will they still be around? Well, as I said, as of May, 2022, they will um, no longer be allowed in for stores to give them out. So whether you're at ShopRite or at CVS, any of those single use plastic bags, they're gonna be out of the market. Okay. Um, and I think, th I'm, I'm not sure if this is a question for Lisa or Ron, um, what about heavy plastic food containers, the pale white or takeout tray types? Is all thin plastic non-recyclable? So I guess this more goes towards mm -hmm. Ron. Um, so I, I know Chinese food in particular, um, those containers, if they are cleaned out, are they recyclable? Yeah, so as I mentioned before, th this all goes back to what our recycling market is willing to take. It's not a matter of whether Ron wants to recycle it or whether Fairlawn wants to recycle it. It's what the markets are going to accept. So at this time, as I mentioned before in my mantra, plastic bottles, jugs, jars, family-sized food tubs. Um, so those don't fit any of those categories. Right now, they're garbage. Will that change next year, three years from now? It's possible. Uh, what's on the horizon is because of the problems overseas with taking materials for recycling is that you now have companies that are looking to build new infrastructure within the United States to start taking some of these other materials. Uh, but it takes time to build these facilities. It's not going to happen in six months. Uh, you're probably talking years, if not a decade, before some of these things are online. Um, so in the meantime, we have to go just what our market is taking. So unfortunately, I can't take those things. Okay, thank you. Um, thank, every, thank you, everyone, for your questions. If you have further questions, Lisa, uh, about the uh, plastic bag ban, Lisa put her um, email in the chat. Um, Ron Lauterman's email was in the chat earlier, but he is uh, certainly findable on the Fairlawn website if you have any questions about recycling. Um, so I'm just going to briefly talk about some upcoming events and, uh, going on in the green team. And in fact, I'm going to pass it over. Um, so I'll, I'll quickly introduce this and then it'll talk to, talk, we'll talk a little bit more about it. So on April 22nd, which is this Thursday at 4 p.m., we will be, the green team is screening Kiss the Ground, which is a documentary about, um, about regenerating uh, agriculture and regenerating the soil. Um, I am posting the link in chat because this is an image and this isn't going to be very helpful. Again, we're going to distribute this presentation and we have this information on Facebook and all other social media so you can find it there. Um, it is a wonderful um, uh, movie. I highly recommend you watch it. It is available on Netflix if you cannot watch it when we're doing this um, the stream and Michael will talk more about that event. Um, I'm going to run through these really quickly, just give you a heads up to keep in mind. Um, if you want the details, uh, you can find, uh, again, this information will go out. Uh, Fairlawn does cleanup events, uh, April 17th, May 15th, June 12th, and September 11th. Um, Ron, do you want to quickly talk about what happens during the cleanup events? 
Yeah, so first off, you have to register because of COVID. Um, I do have limited space on the bus. We meet at the recycling office at about 8.45 a.m. on a Saturday morning. Bus leaves at 9 o'clock. We bring you around to a couple of different locations. We just had one uh, this past Saturday where we cleaned the Fairland Avenue interchange um, with 208. And then at the end of the event, uh, we buy you lunch. And it's been through a family affair deli on Broadway who's been very good with us in, in helping get us food for the volunteers. So um, May 15th is the next one. So please call my office or email me to register with the number of people coming. Okay. I'm going to jump in quickly here because I've done the, the uh, litter cleanup events, you know, for the last several years. I did it this Saturday and you'd be surprised how much fun it is and how obsessed you get. I think Ron has to like beg us all to, okay, you can stop now because you just want to get that last piece, that last bottle, that last, you know, and we, we cleaned up a really surprising and, you know, somewhat distressing amount of litter, but it's, it's really productive. It's fun. And, uh, and it's a great lunch. Um, if you have hazardous waste, there is collection, um, Paramus, Mawa, and Munaki. Um, there are the dates and all this. This is run through the Bergen County Utilities Authority. Um, again, I'm not going to read this slide to you, but if you do have hazardous waste, know that there are disposal collection times, um, and you can certainly find all this information online. And Nick, just so you know, that's for anybody in Bergen County, since it is a Bergen County Utilities Authority event, you just need your driver's license to prove that you are a Bergen County resident. Perfect, thank you. Um, paper shredding event, uh, Fair Lawn Runs paper shredding event. The next one is June 19th um, from nine to one at the Recycling Center. Nick, can I jump in on that one really quick too? Because I get a lot of questions about this. Um, so I don't know how soon we're gonna fill the truck or how many people are gonna show up or anything like that. Uh, the, the last time last year with the one from the county, the, the first one we did, we filled the truck by like 1030. Um, and there were people waiting online. So we ended up having another two events. But uh, as of now, this is the only event for paper shredding. So my suggestion is if you need to get stuff shredded, be there early, because uh, I can't promise you what time the truck will fill. Perfect. Uh, plastic toy collection. Um, uh, Ron, real quick. Yeah, so the, through Second Chance Toys, uh, we collect toys um, for plastic toys uh, for use being donated to orphanages and, and other places where there's kids and they just don't have the funding for buying a lot of toys for them. Uh, so we will collect them. If you go to secondchancetoys.org, we follow their regulations, which is summarized right there in the middle. And if you look at the top, it says Oakland in cooperation with Fairlawn. So we are actually in cooperation with about four different towns where their residents will bring the stuff down to us for collection because we are a, a rather large, um, we have a large container for the collection of these materials. So I'm, I'm not stopping anybody coming in from any place in Burton County with toys for this program. The last time they came in to clean up, I think we had about 1,200 toys that were donated to like I said, orphanages and battered women's shelters and stuff like that. Thank you. Metal and electronics collection. You talked, touched on this briefly before, Ron, but if anyone needs anything, you um, can call and schedule a special pickup. Otherwise, you can drop it off directly at the um, recycling center. Um, construction material collection. Um, there are limited dates between May 3rd and October 18th uh, on your garbage day. Um, uh, yeah, I, I mean, if you need details, you can look it on the website. I'm not going to get too much into it. But yep, Ron? Uh, basically, the regulations are at fairlawn.org slash construction. And that will give you five different options for disposal. This is just one of the options. Fairlawn has construction material collection twice a year um, during those weeks that are listed. And it's on your garbage day. There is no one to call. There is no scheduling for it. Thank you. Uh, paper and cardboard. This just explains a little bit more about it. This is on the website and will be distributed. We talked about this quite a bit. Um, all right. And uh, just ending off some of the green team initiatives. Um, all right. There was a, a quick note, sorry, in the chat for styrofoam. Um, styrofoam is, is recyclable, but not through our standard pickup. Um, we are looking for better ways to have, so we had a styrofoam pickup drive earlier this year. 
Um, I don't know when we're scheduled to have another. Ron, do you want to speak a little bit to this or? Yeah, most of this was a green team initiative. We had it at the parking lot in the recycling center. The, the response was overwhelming. I mean, we had to turn people away because we got so much material. Um, so I know the Bergen hub has several dates throughout the year. I think they just did it this past Saturday in Ridgewood. I, I don't have the other dates. Like I said, this is through the green team and uh, Han Brokman uh, might be able to put something in, in chat or something. Cause I know he's on tonight uh, with some more dates or at least the location where people can go and look for the dates. Okay. And Michael, you want to talk about the uh, green team initiatives? I do, but you know, Michael's getting tired. You know, I'm a, I'm a teacher. So I'm used to moving around and, you know, doing this, doing that. So, um, First of all, thank you so much for staying on and um, thank you so much for, you know, being together with us tonight. So um, it's really exciting. So again, I'm Michael Cellino and um, I'm a teacher and I love Farallon. I even went to Ohio to visit the other Farallon. So, um, you know, we're just so excited to make our town even more amazing than what it is. And I just noticed even just me over the years, we lost so many trees and green shrubs and of those things that make our town even more beautiful and stronger to defend when we have flooding and keeps us cool in the summer. Um, those things are really important. And I know leaves are annoying, don't get me wrong, but they're good, they serve a purpose. Um, but like sidewalks, it's a common good trees, right? We need them to breathe, they filter, they, they take in the exhaust, they add also beauty. So that's something that we are promoting it's just finding the beauty and also the solutions to this we understand you know we have small lots and we understand that you know neighbors like to complain right so we're finding trees that work for our town so this is the fun thing it's fair lawn made so really exciting about that and um uh, one of the events is kiss the ground that we're having at the library now it is a great event celebrating Earth Day and the focus, everyone's welcome, but we're going to focus it and gear it towards elementary. But um, those will be the focus questions that everyone's welcome to join. So um, that's what will happen because without clean soil, there's no clean trees, no clean air. It's just, you know, everything works together. So it's a really great movie and it's uh, moving. So that's a really exciting thing. Everyone is welcome. Again, I mean, you know, who doesn't like to draw and discuss? I mean, maybe, maybe because I'm a teacher. So it'll be really fun. And we're um, excited to hopefully you come and join us. And this is an initiative and we need you. You are able to help us change. One small little thing you do really does make an impact if 20, 30, 40 of us do it. Um, so I just want to leave you with how can we make small changes to help a bigger change, right? What is one thing you can do that's different? And, you know, you can ask yourself, what can I do to make the town safer and cleaner? So, you know, I like to leave off with questions and it's late at night. So um, I'll let you think of that. And I really hope um, you come for Kiss the Ground. It'll be a fun time. And, um, you know, it's a fun way to meet our town because this is what makes the environment. Remember, environment is not just trees. It's the people interacting with around it. That's what makes Feral and amazing. We have such great teams and we have such great leaders. And, you know, I must say, I'm very proud of Farallon and um, I, all of us love our town. So let's make it better. So that's my spiel. Thank you. And I'm ready for bed for my students tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Ron. And thank you, everybody, for your really terrific questions, which, you know, May, all that interaction, you know, made this really interesting and fun. And uh, I, I learned a lot. I took a lot of notes. I learned a lot. And uh, I hope you all did too. And I hope you'll all um, follow the green team on Facebook and um, look for our next events, including Kiss the Ground. So um, good night, everybody. And thank you so much for being here. Thank, good you. thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.